The presidency responds to Sunday's editorial of the Daily Trust newspaper on the widespread insecurity in the country, saying violence is not peculiar to Nigeria. And the People's Democratic Party PDP expresses displeasure as Governor Akiridolu appoints his son as Director General of the State Performance and Project Implementation Monitoring Unit. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakol. In a strong editorial two days ago, Daily Trust newspaper lamented the insecurity in the country. It highlighted the recent 23 travellers heading to Kaduna who were burned alive in a commercial bus at Sabonberni, Sakoto State and other incidents in the north. It accused the president of his and his team of an unwillingness and disinterest to show some concern about these tragic events. And the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, in, is in the news once again, ladies and gentlemen. And this time he has said that he's expecting Mr. President to do anything more um, than what he has done is akin to beating a dead horse. Obasanjo said that military action alone would not effectively end the insurgency in the country. He said the stick and carrot approach should be used to tackle security challenges. Joining us to discuss this is Opunabo Inko Tara, former special advisor on media and publicity to the River State Governor, and of course, Alesta Wilcox, who, who is a political analyst, and Francis Chilaka, who's also a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us uh, on the show. Thank you, and good evening, Mary. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Opunabo. Let's look at the editorial by... Um, the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, the first shocker, of course, is that the Daily Trust had to write this. This is uh, a newspaper that many people would say that does not necessarily go into things such as this. Um, but let's look at the veracity of the claims that are in that particular uh, publication um, against Mr. President and what they thought. In fact, the title of that publication was that, um, I'm going to put it differently, that there is no value to the average life of a Nigerian. Um, do you think that the Daily Trust newspaper went a bit too um, overboard with this publication? Well, not at all. I mean, I think the uh, Daily Trust newspaper was apt in this editorial because um, that lives are being treated with levity by this government is not in doubt. Let's take, for example, the death and burial of the chief, former chief of army staff who died in active service. While he was being dead, without a twinge of conscience, Mr. President and members of his uh, council attended the wedding of the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Justice. That's a statement. Now we are talking of bandits making barbecue of Nigeria in the north. And the president is attending a book lunch, which to me is completely unnecessary. He would have sent a representative if he considers that book lunch extremely important. And so I think the Daily Trust newspaper was asked. It is in Canal, it is quite unknown. If the president's son or child if he was involved in any of this killing, a victim of any of this killing, would he have visited? That's why they say he's insensitive. As the president of the nation, it is expected that every Nigerian is his child, a member of his household, and should be so treated. A situation where you feel indifferent, you come up with high blood pressure, deceptive rhetoric. Oh, we are doing this, we are doing that, we are doing that. And an enemy of performance, concrete performance. Nothing so far has been achieved in the war against banditry, in the war against terrorists. 
Can you really, can you really say, I'm sorry to sp speak over you, can you really say that nothing really has been done in the fight against insecurity and terrorism oh, oh. The, in, fact, in the, the country? Flag, the, present, the flag the present government is receiving is just 10% of what it gave to the Jonathan's administration. Just 10%. Mr. President himself led a protest. But unfortunately, we have a government that is in to criticism. I don't see anything why... Mr. Uh, um, Gabasho want to react to such a thing with such uh, uncomplimentary words. Mr. President, if they see dangerous enemies in the printed shadow, every time you, you have a dissenting view, they believe that you're coming after them, you hate them. That should not be the approach. A government should welcome criticism when the criticisms are constructive. And it is normal. Because if Mr. President had visited somebody in the hospital or gone to Lagos for something crucial that is of national interest, yes, one can understand. Something happened, no comment, you're silent on it, and you're in Lagos attending a book launch, something as insignificant and as trivial as it is, a book launch. Hmm. So that's the height of insensitivity. Okay. It dredges up the solid part of the two, what happened to the uh, chief of army staff who that in not deserve it. Hmm. So that's why they say lives are being treated with levity. It's as if you're not bothered at all. It's not fair. It's not, it's not, it's not proper. And we should say the truth to power. It's highly condemnable. Highly condemnable. Who would have sent even the vice president? Who would have sent a minister to the president? Hmm. What's so special about that book one? Hmm. What's so special about attending the, 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 the uh, wedding of, of your Minister, your COS is about to be buried. Okay. Let yeah, me. That's, 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 that's the height of insensitivity. Let me bring Alester in. Alester, what is the value of the average Nigerian person's life in this country compared to any other person, compared to an outsider or even an expatriate, you know, who um, somewhat falls to the hands of these same kinds of bandits or terrorists? Again, um, uh, Oponabo seems to be harping on the fact that Mr. President attended his son's um, wedding uh, when something um, happened uh, in, a, in a part of the country. Many other people have criticized Mr. President for coming to Lagos State while a, a different state was experiencing um, terrorism and there were victims to, to that effect. Um, but let's start from the value that we place on the average Nigerian life. For example, I'm asking this. Um, if one American, for, for, for example, had been scooped away or abducted by militants, it would take, the American government would do everything in their power to get that Nigerian out. Now let's play, paint a picture of what has happened to two Nigerians lately uh, outside this country, especially the, the um, young lady that died, Itunu, and how the government responded, and of course the fact that it's still an issue that um, somewhat might soon be swept under the carpet. Does that paint a picture of how the Abfed Nigerian is being viewed in his country and outside the country? Why would anybody outside Nigeria want to place value Maryam, on our lives? Asked, you have, you have made, I'm, I'm you trying have to made, ask a question. Let me just book. ask the last question. Would anybody... Hold on. Alessa, are you going to let me an, ask the question so you can answer? You've written a book. I'm asking a question. Alessa, are you going to be ruly, please? I'm asking a question. Would anybody outside this country place value on our lives, um, depending on how we're being treated in this country? I'm asking. I don't. I don't understand. What is the value the of the average the Nigerian book. life? I don't understand the book you've written with respect to your question. I I believe that uh, nobody will. Yes, we all complain about uh, how we are treated in this country. Uh, about, in terms of talking about value. I would say that uh, in time, from time immemorial, uh, Nigerians have not had a fair deal. Uh, I've not had a fair deal. Uh, and I'm surprised my brother Kotare is talking about uh, the criticism of Jonathan being the basis upon which today anybody that wants to talk about Buhari say, oh, he criticized Jonathan or he criticized PDP. Well, I don't think criticism is a bad thing. And uh, like your question directly, without going to other things, uh, we've not had a good deal in Nigeria with respect to the lives of every Nigerian. We've not had a situation whereby a Nigerian is arrested abroad and the government sent troops to go and rescue. We've not had that, we've not had that history right from in time memorial. It didn't start today. We've not had that history. 
we cannot even afford such assets. Uh, you are talking about Americans sending uh, troops to go and rescue their citizens from uh, areas. Nigeria don't have that kind of capability. We don't have the capability. We don't have that asset that America can deploy. We don't have it. So it's, it's, it's not to say uh, we should not have tried. Yeah, we should have tried. But unfortunately, we are not there. And of course, every day, the issues of uh, porn, the issues of uh, population explosion, the issues of various kinds of crime begin to make it difficult. Now, directly to what uh, is one of the matter today, I don't think it would be charitable for anybody to say because uh, Jonathan was criticized or because uh, the DP government was criticized. Therefore, nobody sees anything positive in what has happened in this country. Well, uh, anybody has a right to his own opinion. And I think, uh, in fairness to, to, to every government, the challenges are always intertwining. Remember in time, when in Potakot, where in Kotaria is, or where he used to be, you can't go out after 6 o'clock. There was a time like that in Potakot. I'm from, I'm from River State, too. There was a time in Potakot that all the, all, the, all the clubs closed down. No, there was no night club, no night club in Potakot. There was a time. So, and there was a time in Abuja, bombs were going up, up to the point of bombing the, the what we call it, the, the UN building and other strategic targets. It happened in this country. There was a time in Nigeria that academic football club does not play for much in Bronu, in, in, in Medugri, but they are playing since they have been playing in Medugri. So to say nothing has happened, it's just that the nomenclature of our system, of our problem, keep evolving and keep changing as much as uh, 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 in a very rapid form. And the, I'm not saying, going to say that nobody's doing anything. The military is paying a high price. The military is paying a high price, and we don't recognize that price. Everyone wants to attack the President Buhari as if he's the one that carries the gun and stands on the road or goes to the bush. The military, which is me and you, which is our national pride, are every day on the street, in the bush, in the forest, trying to keep us safe. They would, because we want to criticize the president, we want to attack the president because Jonathan was criticized or because Philip was criticized, we don't recognize those sacrifices that they are making. Today, every time that there was a, a bloody nose to either the bandits or to the uh, Boko Haram, or, we don't report it. It's not news. But when there is an attack on either the military formation or civilians, that becomes a wide news. Are we not uh, finding the embers of the insurgents to think they are winning the war? All right, Alessa, I just promote, want to quickly come in there. Military is doing. So you're saying, so you're saying to us that it. this is not a hold on, um, uh, hold on. And that is not national. Are you trying to tell us that this is not a Buhari problem? You're saying that this is a Nigerian problem. It's a, it's not a leadership problem. It's a people problem. Is that where you're coming from? Again, what most people, especially the Daily Trust newspaper, is harping on. It's the level of insens insensitivity that they think is coming from Mr. President and, of course, members of his, or rather his handlers, in terms of the issues or the outcome of the aftermath of all of these issues of terrorism that are happening in the different parts of the country. What do you have to say about that? I'm sorry, Mr. Tarrant. This, this question is for, is for, is, is, is for Lester. I, I totally reject that, that connotation, that the president must visit every locality and that everything took place. Can even a state governor, a state governor, has he visited every locality that an incident happened? Now, the president, yes, he, he, by, by, by virtue of the fact that he's a president, must always come out to make statements. But this is becoming too many. Will he visit every locality? So we you're saying that because it's, 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 it's happening too many times, so the president should just not no, bother no, no, because no, these no, lives no, no, that are being no, lost no, that, are not that, as important that, anymore. That, so the president no, should pay no that, attention not to that, it. Not that, Is that no. it? Mirena, don't put words in my mouth. Not that. Don't put words in my mouth. Not that. I, I, I want to read between the lines as to what I'm saying. I'll now, try not to. I'll try to, I'll try to take every word that you say. If tomorrow... If tomorrow there is an incident, unfortunately, on Lagos Express Expressway, the president should go there. If tomorrow, the, if the other day there is one at the Abba Township, the president should go there. No, at, it, it doesn't work that way. Presidential movement, I don't work in the presidency. Uh, my brother Kotari has worked in government, so he knows uh, protocols. So uh, presidential movement cannot just be things you just do at the whip of hand. There are things that you do with a lot of past planning, with advanced planning. Not to say that I am also not, not in favor of the fact that Silence, silence should, 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 should be condoned. But you can discover that since this president came in, the military has been so fortified, equipment are provided, 
a lot of resources has gone in for the same purpose. Okay. So if the result has not matched our expectation, which I believe many Nigerians have not have not agreed that the result, does not mean or preclude that things drastically are not being done, even far more than what has happened before. Okay. What was on ground before was a child's play to um. and what is uh, was a child's play. Oh, okay. And I'm sure Branko Tarias can confirm this. All right. All right. We, before we go back to Mr. Tarias, let's go to Francis. Francis, um, I know that you have a lot to say about this, but let, let's just go. I, I have a question. The first reaction that we hear on this Daily Trust matter is that the editor was arrested, by the way, uh, on whose order we're yet to understand. Now, of course, the federal government has reacted to the issue and they're saying that you know insecurity and terrorism is not necessarily a nigerian problem it's happening all across africa but why is nigeria not dealing with nigeria's problems the way it should i want to we're still talking on the issue of insensitivity here um the reaction of the federal government the arrest of the editor of the daily trust for doing his job these are questions that are begging for answers what are your thoughts so the thing is, we we um, talking about what has played out between the presidency and uh, daily trust uh, is a reminiscence of what the society has turned out to be. Uh, where those in power believe that uh, the have no Francis, right can you turn off the fan or the whatever is making the noise there, please? Because it's not letting us hear you. Is it done? Okay, so let's quickly go back. Uh, um, okay, Francis, I think you're back. Go ahead. And I was saying, I said the thing is, we, we, we seem to have a leadership pattern, not only with this presidency, but a leadership pattern in Nigeria where uh, those in power believe that the people have no right to question their actions. And this boils down to lack of accountability, corruption, and bad governance. You see, today in Nigeria, we have two, 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 two heads we're fighting with. On one hand, we have Mr. President. On the other hand, we have the presidency. And I will say this, you know, I have taken time to read the editorial, and I've taken time to read the response of the government, and I will say that this government has, you know, found joy in attacking anyone that comes out to criticize the way she has handled the issue of insecurity in the land. If you're, if you're on, on social media, you'll observe that right now, there's, there's something trending on social media called, uh, they say, hashtag secure north. The youth are coming out. They are complaining. They are agitated. They are saying that if the president is from the north, the attorney general is from the north, the chief of army staff is from the north, the um, chief of naval service from the north, the, the SS is from the north, and all these people are from the north, and yet the north is not secured. They have come out bluntly to say, Mr. President, if you cannot secure our lives and properties, resign. Why, has they not, why have they not been arrested? Why must it be because editorial was written, which is not far fetched from what these youths are saying? The insecurity in the land is worrisome. The Nigerian life has no value as far as those in government are concerned. It's not only in the north, it's all across, across the entire country. So anybody who sits down to tell me, oh, we cannot compare this, we cannot compare this government with Jonathan, we cannot look at it that bonds were going up. I think I think it's just it's just being insensitive to the to the point of Nigerians. The whole essence why we have a president and those who have elected into power is for them to use the machinery of government to protect the lives and property of Nigerians. And if they fail to do this, they have no right to remain there as leaders. But, but can we really say that the president has failed? Because I've asked this question many times. When people come and say the president has failed, has he really failed? The president has sp he's spoken on these issues over and over again. He has changed his security chiefs. At some point, we were angling for that, and that had been done. Um, he, at some point, relocated... Um, um, you know, certain people to, you know, mm. where it was really hot, the, the, the areas where, you know, banditry and Boko Haram were, you know, hot. He did do that. Um, there was even a time when they declared some areas a no-fly zone. So can you really say the presidency or the president has failed in fighting insecurity? 
or is is there still room for something to happen? Is the is it is there something that needs to be done that the presidency is not seeing? I'm 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 trying here to balance this conversation. As we stand today, as Nigerians, yes, this presidency has failed us. But the question which is begging for an answer is why is it that the presidency is finding it difficult to publish the names of those who are sponsoring this insecurity? What is the problem in publishing their names? Why is it that the CBN, CBN up to now has not published the names of the accounts, owners that were used to launder money for insecurity? So these are questions that the presidency should answer. And these are questions when these questions are addressed and made public, I am telling you half of the issue of insecurity would have been solved. Mm. You, okay. cannot, you cannot be patting people, creating problems, killing people, creating mayhem. You cannot be patting them at the back. Each time we hear that, oh, they, that, you know, they, they, they are repentant uh, um, Boko Haram, they are repentant um, um, uh, mm. headsmen, they are, what kind of repentance are we talking about? When you are with somebody who has done something wrong and has repented, what happens to the person that has been affected? What happens to the family of the people they have killed? So it's, it's, more, it's more like saying that, Yes, the government is being insensitive to the plight of Nigerians. Yes, that the value there is no value placed on the Nigerian life, no value at all. Okay, back to you, um, Open about a, a, a Hausa group, just like. Um uh, Francis Chilaka has said, has called for the resignation of Mr. President. They're saying that the president keeps on sparing Fulani bandits. Uh, and then, of course, going after Kanu, Namdi Kanu, and Sunday Buhu. Again, um, a, another group of people, um, the Human Rights um, Writers Association of Nigeria, had also said that Mr. President should either resign or be impeached by the National Assembly, being that he lacked the capacity to protect Nigerians. Is the president not able to protect us? Is it the president's problem that we're not as safe as we should be? What about the governors in the different states? Well, uh, first, before I go into that, let me quickly summarize the issue of Inland, the Kanu, and the, the bandits. Of course, there's a clear case of um, discrimination. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's a clear case of discrimination. Yes. Manako segregation has changed discrimination. That's what we have there. And um, in response to what my brother Wilcox said, first, I said that this present administration has not received the first 10% of what it gave to Jonathan's administration. I did not compare. The Jonathan's administration, the performance of Jonathan's administration, with this idea. The point I am making is that Jonathan was tolerant, but this is a government that sees dangerous enemies in the painted shadows and the cyber sinister plot behind every dissent work. Or I, how do you justify the arrest and detention of the editor? It is absolutely ridiculous and draconian. Why would you? Why would you want to get arrested? You did worse under Jonathan. That is the point I'm making in terms of criticism. You did worse. And you were tolerated. You were booked. So when people criticize you, you should also accept it in good faith. That is why you're there. And secondly, Mr. President, both stops at Mr. President's table. For six years, they called for the change of the services. He never did. And Mr. President is in fact complicit. If anything happens, he is as guilty as those perpetrating the crime because the boss stops at his table. If he's not competent to overwhelm the situation, I'm telling you, then let him resign. Honorable. Now, I'll tell you one thing again. The service, those who succeeded the service chiefs, accused their predecessors of corruption. They said they did not purchase the arms and ammunition that they were at the money they are uh, uh, allocated for. I'm talking of the present chief of, chief of defense now saying that. The NSA confirmed it rather than rewarded with ambassadorial appointment. That is the two the points. Hmm. So why would you criticize the such a government and say the government is like with levy? And why would you blame Mr. President? Can I remove the service team? Can the government remove the service team? Who removes the service team? The appointment are removed. The appointment is Mr. President. The hmm. box of if today as uh, 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 Plus TV goes down, it is the ND that will be accused. Okay. I'm not giving you, Marianne, not at all. 
Okay. So let us get that straight. You cannot absolve Mr. President from that. No, okay. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't said that. Uh, sorry, US, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I haven't, I haven't said that. You, you asked the question. If Mr. President has done enough for something, something of that sort, is it? That was your question. Yes. In addressing this issue. Was that your question? Yes. Now, just like my brother Tilara said, he has not done enough. Because they have been treated with gloves. Initially, they told us, that's why we are, I said we are tired of the high blood pressure of deceptive veterans and many of our country You told us that you are going to disclose the identities of these bandits. The next thing we have, you are granting amnesty. You said they are not penitent. They have judged their sins and penitent their to the government, therefore you are going to grant amnesty. What of the victims? Then, this amnesty you are talking about, we are even, we are even to the house. What are the penalties for the crimes committed? What are the deterrents to others? And the Kaduna State Governor once said he will never grant amnesty or negotiate with these characters again because he was granted amnesty, gave them money, and they went back to the, to, to the trenches. These are recidivists. Okay. This issue of amnesty, this issue of uh, purported uh, penitence is because they, what is, that's what we call in criminal techniques of neutralization. Okay. Close to stay war. They want that pressure reduced. So they are coming out, and again, they are coming out to re strategize. The pressure is on them. The president military, that is the president under the president CBS, is trying. I will not, I will not say he's not trying. But then, do they even have what it takes to contain these characters? No. Who's right. going to provide this, Mr. President? Because we, we do not have too much time. Mr. President. So you cannot just treat it for whatever. Okay. And you should be able to absorb criticism. We do, not, we do not have too you much time, so I want to quickly go to... Thank you, Mr. Tyre, because we, we really have very little time. I want to quickly go to um, Alester and Francis before we wrap things up. Alester, what needs to be done? Um, this is a question I'm sure you get asked all the time. What do you think needs to be done um, to first change the body language, because that's a word that we throw around every time, uh, Mr. President, which is being read by a lot of people as insensitive, um, like I said, the army, of course, has been asked to do a job which they are doing. There's a lot that needs to be done, but what is that thing that Mr. President needs to do to regain the confidence of the average Nigerian um, in terms of the I, I, keeping us safe as a country? I appreciate the outburst of my brother, and I can see the pattern of his voice. I, was, I could just, but just smile and laugh. Um, it, it's good, my brother. Keep it up. But you see, the fact remains, and I must keep saying this, the president we know from the time he took office, he's a man of few words. He doesn't talk. You know him. He's a man of few words. But his actions are always shown. This is a man that has reinvented the military. A military that was so much, that had so much low morale, lack of equipment. They were running from the enemy. And the president came in and reinvigorated the, the military, Look at the Air Force, equipped them, Modern gadgets have been have been brought in, new aircraft, and the and the heat. All the in fact, uh, Shakao is gone. Most of the commanders are gone. They say he's doing nothing. Go to the I'm go to the me, yeah. Yes, this is. Alester, I didn't this ask this for a scorecard from Mr. President. No, 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 I'm no, no, asking, no, no. No, what no, does no, the no, president no, need no, to do no, now no, to regain no, the confidence no, of no, the no, average no, Nigerian no, that he's indeed no, fighting no, for no, us no, to be safe no, and secure? We're not politicizing this issue. I don't need to hear the politicization no, 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 of this issue. What needs to be done? Quickly. Open up, please let him speak. Thank you very much. Please, please, please. I don't even know the president. I talk, I talk Mr. Tyre, please let him speak. When you were speaking, you were we allowed to speak. We must keep encouraging the army, our military, which is the pride of our nation. We must keep encouraging them. We must be supporting them. That is all we need to do. The president, the best he can do is to give the directive, is to provide the equipment, which is good. Yes, there is a big room. The biggest room in the world is the room of improvement. There is a room to improve more, to bring our military to the 21st century military, to get more equipment, with uh, 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 in line with the uh, funds availability, that is what you will do, and I guess he's doing that. Okay. So the military must be encouraged through the press. The activities that they are against must be must be broadcast, just like their losses are being broadcast. 
They're against what we broadcast because that is the only pride we have, the military. Okay. We don't have another pride in this country. It's the okay. military. And so the military that is taking the heat, having suffering casualties, paying the supreme price to keep us safe. And every day we come, we lambast because we want to get to the president. That's for me, it's okay. uncharitable, it's unpatriotic, and the least to say, and an and, and front to the Nigerian military and according to the enemy. Okay, the quickly, enemy we don't have time, Alester. Let's quickly go to you. Francis. Francis, um, Alessa seems to be saying that the president, the best the president can do is encourage the military. I, I do not know if that's all. Is the president's best, according to him, good enough to secure us? As Don't forget, we're in the U-tight season. A lot of people are scared to travel home because of one issue or the other. And let's not even just... Um, limited to the issue of banditry, this kidnapping every other day. And uh, it seems to be a potpourri of issues. Every <coughs> single place is experiencing one form of insecurity or the other and some form of mayhem. Um, is the president's best good enough or is there anything else that the president needs to do again? The same question, to boost the confidence of the average Nigerian um, because we see a lot of people running away from the country. Uh, because they feel that they would rather be safe uh, in another country other than the country that should be theirs? Well, um, in all sincerity, and I've said it several before, uh, the president has not done enough um, in securing the lives of the ordinary Nigerians. It is one thing to buy all the ammunition. How fortified and how qualified are those? And how have you taken care of those who would use these ammunition? So if the other day, if you take the other day, you saw the IG complain about where the policemen live and all of that. These are same men who are meant to take care of you and I. The same policemen who are meant to take care of you and I have been turned into bodyguards by politicians. So this presidency needs to stand its ground, withdraw everybody attached to an individual. Every policeman that's attached to an individual should be withdrawn. The soldiers that are walking around the street controlling traffic should be withdrawn. Put people strategically where they ought to be. You have about 80 checkpoints from Shagamu down to the east. What are these checkpoints for? Okay. Are we here to the southeast? So let us, let, us, let us be very proactive. Move people, move the forces to where you need them most at every point in time. Okay. There are too many policemen, too many soldiers loitering the streets, doing nothing. Anybody that is not doing what they're supposed to do, the presidency should throw that person out. Okay. The presidency should avoid nepotism. Let us become patriotic. Patriotism is what is lacking in our country today. There is no patriotism. Materialism has become the pain of our life system. We need to throw that away. We need to wake up. We need to begin to think as if there's no box. All right. It's not we for have us to, to sit down and begin to, you know, say the presidency has done this, the president has not done that. The, people are, the ordinary Nigerians cannot defend themselves. They do not have the arms. They do not have anything to defend themselves. Okay. So it is the job of the military. That is what they're paid for. They're being paid with the taxes of the Nigerian people. So it must be utilized well and ensure that they are kept where they are needed most. We have to go. Thank you very much, Francis Chilaka, Lester Wilcox, our uh, political analyst, and of course, uh, Oponabo Inkotara is a former uh, special advisor on media and publicity to the governor of River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We can only hope thank for the you. best. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for having me. Thank all you. right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. When we return, we'll be discussing the response of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the appointment of the son of the governor, Akiri Dolu, as the Director General of the State Performance and Project Implementation Monitoring Unit. Stay with us.